at the Global Compact Leadership Summit, which is taking place right now. Also at the UN General Assembly, its annual meeting where there's important discussions going on about the post-2015 agenda. Then the Social Good Summit, and to top it all off, the Clinton Global Initiative. So it's going to be a busy week in here at DevX. We're going to bring you all the news. Um, so to kick that off, we're going to have a short conversation with our reporter, Michael Igo. Uh, and Michael, you are in New York. Tell us, where, where are you right now and what have you been seeing today? Great. Thanks, Andrea. I'm here at the UN Global Compact Leaders Summit for 2013. Um, this is really a pre-event to the UN General Assembly uh, meetings next week, and the intention of this event is to really convene business leaders um, to help, you know, really shape a message from the business community in anticipation of this goal setting for the post-2015 development agenda that's really going to be kicked off next week um, and then last for the remainder of the year. Um, so I think people are, are really excited here. There's been um, you know, packed houses at all of the various sessions that have gone on, some surprise visits by, you know, some of our real celeb development celebrities, Muhammad Yunus, among others. Um, so it's an exciting place to be, and um, I think people are excited for both this Leaders Summit and also for everything to come next week. Great. So we understand that today there were a number of side events leading up to tomorrow's main uh, body of the Leaders Summit. So tell us about some of the events that you went to today. Sure, thanks. Um, so you're right, I mean this has just been a jam-packed agenda um, and you know I, I've had to, to choose carefully but I, I got the day started early at the Business Action for Africa um, meeting and the purpose of that meeting was to launch a new report um, which is building a new global partnership with business. Um, that report was launched today. It's really, um, the purpose of the report is to pr provide examples, case studies um, of businesses who have successfully partnered uh, with each other or with donors in Africa um, to achieve development outcomes. Uh, the event included, you know, high-level speakers from Harvard's Kennedy School, uh, the UN ambassador from Kenya was there and made a really impassioned argument for the importance of involving uh, the development community. The sort of key takeaway line that he drove home was, you know, development is business. Um, and also um, industry representatives from companies like Unilever who have long le legacies of uh, interacting with the development community or really helping to shape the development agenda. Um, after that, I attended the business call to action meeting, um, which was really focused on inclusive growth and offered participants opportunities to um, discuss the way that they've, you know, looked at sort of bottom of the pyramid challenges and um, really how you incorporate uh, inclusive growth into your core business goals. There was a strong USAID presence at that event. Um, Chris Jurgens, the director of USAID's Office for Global Partnerships, was there and spoke with spoke about the way that USAID has worked to um, to bring a lot of these partners on board and really focus on on their, you know, core business strategies, but um, in a way that also emphasizes the shared values they have with USAID's uh, mission as one of the world's largest development donors. And then finally, I, I just left an event um, on um, the GATE Global Impact, which is uh, something that people here seem really excited about. It's centered around impact investing, um, and the, the purpose is to try to provide sort of a technological platform to facilitate better um, finance of, you know, promising social impact projects around the world. So looking at what regulation changes need to be made or, um, you know, how to do things like connect diaspora groups to um, exciting projects in their countries of origin um, and to provide the, the innovative financial mechanisms that are necessary to make all of those things happen. Um, so people were, were very excited about that and that's where Muhammad Yunus came and, and made his surprise visit. Although I believe he also hosted or um, was on the panel of an event uh, for his business as well, the Unis Social Business. Great. So, Michael, give us a sense of what these business leaders are talking about. We know, as you said, that businesses have been very involved in the discussion around how to define the post-2015 agenda, and, and as you mentioned, Unilever in particular. Um, so, what are people talking about today? Yeah, you're exactly right. I think 
you know, something that's really been emphasized is um, the difference between the situation that we find ourselves in now, preparing for this post-2015 development agenda, compared with um, the Millennium Development Goals and the way those came about. You know, a few times now people have, have mentioned that the MDGs, you know, while providing, you know, great inspiration that we've, we've done a lot of work to achieve, are really social goals. And people are anticipating that the post-2015 development agenda will be much more directed towards business and measured in ways that businesses can contribute to. So I think one of, one of the big messages here, and not just from the business community, but also from um, high-level UN officials, um, is really that the international development community is no longer just sort of a, a small group of people who specifically consider themselves international development workers, but it's really much broader than that, and the business community should, should have a stake and consider themselves part of that development community. So that's been, that's been one of the big takeaways. Um, but you know, that's a case that, that the business community is going to have to make, and I think they're anticipating in the next week having to face some resistance to that message. Um, you know, there is a bit of a history of distrust between business and um, humanitarians or business and development. Um, so really making sure that they're speaking the, the same language um, and holding each other accountable that the business community, you know, is able to put in, in place the systems of accountability that, that measure progress towards actual development outcomes and inclusive growth. I think that's what people will be watching for. But they do expect that, that some countries at the UNGA um, will be voicing some reservations about the increased role that the business community has been playing in this preparation for the development goal setting. Michael, just last question before, before we let you get back to the action. Um, did you hear any suggestions on how either people in business or from the more traditional development community can overcome that trust deficit? Were there any key how-tos? It's a great question. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's really the challenge. One thing that people are concerned about is that there's not a, a clear um, game plan for ensuring that um, business representatives play a role in the planning going forward. So I think, you know, people are really watching out to see how those meetings going forward will be taking place, you know, when the business community will be invited to come in and, and really share their specific experiences as the post-2015 goals are actually developed. One of the things that people have been talking about is something that seems very simple but I think causes a lot of problems, and that is that these two communities tend to just speak a different language in a lot of cases. So, you know, someone raised the example this morning. The business community often talks about price externalities, the, the things that occur um, that you don't intend that, you know, can, ha can harm people um, even when they're, you know, sort of separate from your, your core business strategy, um, whereas the development community tends to talk about unintended consequences. So just, you know, making sure that business and development are speaking the same language, I think, is one thing that hopefully events like this can, can help to foster. Great. Michael, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be checking in again with you, with you tomorrow. And there's some exciting developments tomorrow. There's a new report that's going to be released from the Global Compact. We'll definitely be checking in with you about that. And some of these key issues about who gets to have a say in the post-2015 agenda, we'll certainly be tracking closely next, next week as, as the General Assembly gets underway. So, uh, Michael, good luck. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate it.